Alright, so class, one more time. Um, this video is going to go up on YouTube, but we can keep it so that only we can see it. Because we're going to be in it, but it's going to be really valuable for you. Western coast of South America, we know that that's a mountain range, so that looks like mountains, right? Okay. What about off the coast of South America? What's there? Which one? Pacific. Off the western coast of South America. Which oh, ocean? Pacific. Pacific Ocean, okay. <laughs> and then we get way, 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 way over here. We're still in the ocean, but even though we're still in the ocean, there are actually some islands over here. And these are the islands, and these islands are little volcanoes. So we don't want them to be quite as high as our Andes mountain range, but we want this to be another little mountain range. So we're going to have to tape this down again. Want to stick a piece of tape there? And let's just make, let's make this a smaller, lower mountain. Like maybe that, okay? All right, and what was all this in here again? Ocean, Ocean right? Okay, good. The camera. Good. So, we have three slits on here. We have this thing called slit A, that one called slit B, and that one called slit C. If you flip over to page 64, you'll see there are some functions there. And I think what I want to do is I want to run through this one time, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the questions and see if we need to run through it again, okay? Is everybody all right with that? Yeah. All right. So we're thinking about convection, right? Where are we at this slit, slit B? Which part of this are we, are we at? That's right. We're right at the top of the convection cycle. Is that correct? Yeah. So if you look down there, if you look down into the mantle underneath the tables, right, you see all that hot magma down there rolled up? Yeah. See it all there? What's it going to do? It's going to It's going to come up. And when it gets to the top, what's going to happen to it? It's going to spread. It's going to spread. So part of it's going... Okay, so as it comes up, it's... When it spreads, does it go up into the water or does it spread out flat on the ocean floor? Flat out on the ocean floor. All right, so let's see if it can just start to spread a little bit. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The problem is we didn't start at the same spot. Let's go back so we're all together. So you guys have to come up at the same rate. Because this is all one blob coming up, right? Why is it splitting apart? <laughs> go ahead and go a little bit. Why is it splitting apart in the middle? Why is that pressure from the Say it again. Magnitude? Magnitude has to do with... Magnets. Okay, we want to get to magnetic field. What did you say? What did you say? I said pressure. The pressure from the magma underneath? Could that be one reason? It could be being pushed up? and the pressure from underneath could be pushing it apart. Is that a possibility? Okay, let's think about that as a possibility. Now, I need everybody to come up in here. Like, close. Seriously close. What is different now about this than it was when it first started? So when it first started, it was just, it was just that, right? Yeah. And then it got here. What is this stuff? It's new rocks being made, but isn't this new rocks being made? Yeah. It's a different color. It's a different color. Hmm. So if we take a picture of the ocean floor with a satellite, which we are able to do, we have several satellites up there that image the ocean floor all the time, they can actually image through the water and make it seem like the water is hardly even there. So they can look at the ocean floor itself. The ocean floor does not have different color rocks on it. The ocean floor is pretty much all the same dark, charcoal -y gray color material with lots of squishy sediment on top of it. So why did I do this? No one person knows because we talked about it this morning. Want to give it a shot? Yeah, because um, some of the rocks, the magnetic uh, it points north, and some of the rocks, um, Okay, so let's 
Let's go back to this point again, right here. Notice I labeled this north and south. South America is to the east, and Australia, India, all of that is to the west. So this is coming up in the Pacific Ocean. We know that, right? And this, this thing, this rift, this big crack in the Pacific Ocean floor, is called the East Pacific Rise. And along the East Pacific Rise, we know that this convection current is coming out onto the surface and creating the ocean floor, right? When this stuff flows out, this magma flows out onto the ocean floor surface, it's liquid, right? It's melted rock. When it hits that cold water and it's up on the surface, what happens to it? It hardens and it turns into solid rock. Okay. Did you guys, someplace like maybe sixth grade, do an experiment where you had a bunch of iron filings and a magnet and you got them all to line up with the magnet? Yeah. Did they do that before? You've done that? You've done that before? There are, inside this magma, there are little tiny grains of iron. So the easy way to think about this, this isn't really what it looks like, but it's the right idea. The easy way to think about it is think about these little tiny grains of iron being long and skinny. And iron lines up with the Earth's magnetic field. So where would a compass point on this north, south, east, west thing? Where would a compass actually point? Which direction? North, right? So the compass would point north. And the iron, those little bitty iron grains inside this magma are going to line up with the magnetic field of the Earth. So they're all going to point this way. They're going to point north. Okay? And every time we see a white part of paper coming up, we're going to think about this as, oh, the compass is pointing north. The iron grains are pointing north. And when that rock solidifies, when that magma solidifies on the ocean floor, those little iron grains get frozen in alignment, so they're pointing north. So I'm actually going to just write a big letter N on there so we know that. Maybe. So here we are. And that's the way the iron grains are pointing, okay? Now, right about this time, Something's happening inside the Earth. Stop for a second. Something's happening inside the Earth. Does anybody know where that magnetic field is actually formed? Who said Earth's core? Earth's core. We, we can see it in outer space. We can see the effects of it in outer space. But the Earth's magnetic field is actually generated inside the Earth's core. So there's a lot of metal in there, iron and nickel and sulfur inside the Earth's core, and it's all molten, and it's flowing around. And do you remember from physics about electricity? Yeah. When you get electricity from those metals, and they're flowing around, you generate a magnetic field. So something happens inside the Earth's core. We do not completely understand this. If you think this is really cool stuff, go get your PhD in geology. You can work on understanding this better, because we need some people to work on it. But we know that the stuff in the Earth's core is changing, and what happens as a result of those changes is instead of your compass needle pointing north, if we went back, oh, maybe, maybe a couple hundred thousand years, maybe a couple hundred million years, if we went way back in time, instead of the compass needle pointing north, the compass needle would point south. The Earth's magnetic field flip-flops. But it doesn't flip-flop like, okay, every million years it's going to flip-flop. Sometimes it's a million years, sometimes it's longer, sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it stays, sometimes it flip-flops quickly. So when we have these black X's, this is when the magnetic field of the Earth is aligned to the south. Okay? So the rocks there look the same. It's just if you take something that senses magnetism and you get the data, it's going to show that they're reversed. Okay, so time keeps going on, and what happens? So you guys need to pull equally. Uh-oh, what happened again? Did it flip-flop again? Yeah. And it's pointing north again. Okay, keep going. What happened? And now what happens? Keep going. 
north, yeah. south. Oh, look at this. Way wider, yeah. really skinny. So if the rate that they're pulling is about the same all the time, then that's a longer period of time and that's a shorter period of time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, now, we've got a little problem. Because we got over here near the coastline of South America, and we got over here by these other volcanoes, these mountains. So where are we in our cycle? Here we are going like this. When we get over here to A or C, we're to this point. We're to the down-going limb. So what should happen there? Somebody fix it so it does what it's supposed to do. where would it actually be going? So we would have the cracks in the tables under here and it would actually go back down into the, into the what down there? The what? The mantle, right? So what happens as this continues to spread? So now I need another two volunteers on each side over here and here. And I need the original people to be in the middle. So original people come in. I need another volunteer here. Need another one over there? <coughs> I need a person here and there. Okay. So now you know what's going on. So continue the cycle. We're all going to have to pull together here, right? We all got to go the same rate. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's stop for a second. We're going to turn off the convection belt for a second. What was going on over here? Sometimes it was kind of jumpy, right? How do you think that kind of jumpiness gets reflected in the Earth? Earthquakes. Got it, earthquakes. So when you come over here to this point, you get a lot of earthquakes along here. What about over there? Do you get a lot of earthquakes? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No. The other thing is, why did I draw these pictures? What are those pictures of? Why did I draw those? Why are there volcanoes there? Think about the convection cycle. The magma comes up and Yeah, so what's the temperature of this stuff over here? Hot. What is the temperature of it when it comes up here? Hot. And as it goes from here, to here, what happens? Yeah. So over here, is it warmer than here? Yeah. And over here, is it warmer than here? Yeah. And here and here, are they about the same temperature? Yeah. Yes. And here and here, about the same temperature? Yeah. By the time it gets over here, it's cold. By the time it gets to South America, it's cold. <coughs> when it goes down into the mantle again, down here at the bottom, what happens to the temperature? Yeah. It gets hot again. Remember when we did our convection lab, when you put that blob of corn syrup in there and it got hot and then it started to pull up to the top? Why did it rise up? Heat rises. Heat rises. So when it gets hot, it starts to rise up. And when it rises up, what does it make? Volcanoes. Volcanoes. That's why we've got volcanoes here. We've got volcanoes over there. Let's think about the direction the plates are moving. Hang on to that one. So here, this is a plate boundary, right? Because we have new ocean floor being made here. This plate over here is a different plate from this plate over here. This plate here, we've got that kind of motion, right? Coming up, splitting apart. This has, this boundary has a name. It starts with a D. Anybody know what it is? Divergent. Divergent. So now we can put some more names on our convection cycle. Here's our convection cycle. Heat is rising at the top where it comes to the sea floor and it splits apart. That's a divergent plate boundary. The new ocean floor crust continues to get cooler and cooler as it moves away from the divergent plate boundary. And when it hits this other plate over here, it's cold and it starts to sink back down into the mantle. Right? Is that where we were so far? Yeah. Okay, so let's look at this boundary over here. That stuff is going that way, right? This, believe it or not, 
is moving that way. Splitting apart over here, colliding over here, correct? So this is a different kind of plate boundary. This is a divergent, this is a convergent. Convergent, collide, divergent. Did you ever hear anybody in their conversation say, oh, but I diverge, meaning they went away from the topic? Yeah. This is away from. Convergent, they're colliding together. Can we add some more to our convection cycle? Yeah. So what's going on here? What's happening here? Talk me right. through this. Right. Right. Okay, and here? Divergent. And what happens to the plate as it spreads apart? Cools. And what happens over here? Convergent. And then it? Sinks. And then someplace over here, sometimes it? Earthquakes and volcanoes. Good. One other thing we need to do. We talked about hot, cold. What about age? Young, young, old. Young, old. Okay. So we're on this thing in relationship to South America is the oldest ocean crust. Where's the youngest? One other thing you need to know. Do you remember in chemistry when you had to draw those phase pictures of solids, liquids, and gases? And you probably drew like a box. And inside of the box for solids, you probably drew the particles all lined up like this. Did you guys do this? Who did this? Mr. Holly? And then when you drew the box for the liquid, this is the solid, this is the liquid, and this will be the gas. When you do the box for the liquid, you kind of drew them like that, right? They were all over the place. And then for the gas, they were like that, and that was it. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. So the solid is compacted. What's the density of the solid compared to the liquid, compared to the gas? Yes. Solid is? More dense, right? And the gas is? But we know for sure then the liquid is less dense than the solid, right? Yeah. Okay. Does that mean, what does that mean about the volume of it? Liquid to solid. If the liquid is less dense than the solid, which one's going to take up a bigger volume if we have the same amount of mass? Solid. Yes. All right. Density equals what? Mass over volume. All right, so if we want to know which one takes up a bigger volume, we have the same mass. If we want the volume, how do we solve for the volume? So what do we do with density? The density of the material is, when it's liquid, is lower. Yeah. The mass is the same. What happens to the volume? It increases. You're wrong. It's got to be bigger. It yeah. So if this is hot and liquid, this is going to be high volume. This is going to be low volume. Hot, young, high volume. High volume means it takes up more space, right? So if I tell you that when it comes up out of the ocean floor, that it actually forms a mountain range like this in the middle of the ocean, and as it spreads out, I need you guys to hold this up like this. As it spreads out, it gets colder. And when it gets colder, it condenses. So when it gets colder, it gets slower. There's a mountain range in the middle of the ocean. And as you move away from that spreading center, 
it starts to lower down. The ocean gets deeper. Okay? All right, you can stop 